Good evening, I'm Judy Woodruff, and it's a very special Shields and Brooks you will not want to miss as we honor Mark Shields' decades of Friday night analysis. All that and more on tonight's PBS NewsHour. Now we've come to the moment that I hope wouldn't ever come when we say our farewells and pay tribute to Mark Shields as our regular Friday night analyst alongside David Brooks. Before we hear from the two of them, we want to share with you a look back at Mark's remarkable run. Finally tonight, some Friday night conversation and analysis with and from Gergen and Shields. Shields and Gigo. And to the analysis of Shields and Brooks, that is syndicated columnist Mark Shields and New York Times columnist David Brooks. For more than 30 years, Mark has provided critical context and perspective to some of the most historic moments in American politics. Impeachments. The attitude in the country remains that Bill Clinton lied. Uh, they don't want him to leave. War. War should not be the first resort. It has to be the last resort. He lit it up. White House first. This is a person of enormous talent. And the current president. Donald Trump is criminally uncurious. There from the beginning, his wife of 54 years, Ann Shields. Tell me what you remember about the early days of Mark doing the news hour. Whenever there was big political news, they would call Mark, and it just kind of migrated eventually to a Friday night regular venue. Mark liked it, and I think Lair liked it a lot, so that made it a go. As seen by the Gergen Shields 1988 politics observation team. Mark became a weekly guest on the McNeil Lehrer News Hour during the 1988 presidential election. He brought a wealth of experience on Democratic campaigns. In 68, Robert Kennedy. In 72, Edmund Muskie. And four years later, Mo Udall. It's the absolute authenticity of the guy. Mr. Shields. To our co-founder, Robin McNeil, Mark embodied the goal of the program. Jim Lehrer and I set out to, to say, hey, talking heads are some of the most valuable ways of human beings communicate, and why not make the most of it and get the best talking heads we can? And so Mark fitted perfectly into that. David is wrong in this one instance, okay. and it's, it's the first time tonight. Right. Uh, <laughs> He's challenged his conservative counterparts on the issues. My favorite moments in television have been Friday nights with Mark Shields. David Gergen was his first sparring partner, sharing the desk with Mark for six years. What is it about him that you think makes him different? He knows a heck of a lot more about politics than I do, but he had a humility about him as well as that Irish wit that just made him a great partner. Judy, something else in television, as you know, it can be a highly competitive field. And often you may be paired with somebody who you can't quite trust. You never know when they're going to get, you're going to get a knife in the back. I always knew with Mark. I could totally trust him. There have been heated moments. Mark and I went at it last week because we passionately disagree. Our current pair, Mark and David Brooks, were at odds on the war in Iraq. What are we going to do afterwards? Who's going to be with us? Are we going to be the first Western Christian pro-Israeli occupying force, military occupying force of an Arab nation in, the, in, the, in that region. I mean, There's about 12 questions there, David. Uh, I'd say they're all irrelevant. Still, he's always kept it fun. Mark, they spent three hours talking, so what do we assume has taken place here? Well, we assume, I think, uh, first of all, Judy, that this week will be a yawn. Uh, the pa <laughs> past so we can all go home. Well, right. I mean, you know, we're looking for airplane no, You're not supposed to, to say that, Mark. And kept it civil, whether with us at the news hour or at CNN's Capital Gang, where he debated the late Robert Novak alongside a good friend, my husband, Al Hunt. We've spent literally thousands of hours together, dinner with you and Ann. Just a problem of communications, Mark? We did a 17-year program together, conventions out there on the campaign trail, and 30 years of Georgetown basketball. I have learned a lot, and wow, it has been fun. So it's hard to condense Mark Shields into one conversation, much less an answer. But you are such close friends with him. 
What sets him apart? What makes Mark special? He's interested in a lot of different things, but those things which he's really interested in, politics and family and faith and sports, he gets deeply engaged. He's not a passive observer. We don't need passive observers for things that matter. Sports matter, G. <laughs> This is the doubleheader. That love of sports even inspired a Shields and Brooks spinoff. It was in the newsroom, very casual, no scripts, no pre-interviews, no notes. They both just sat down and we riffed. This is where we talk about the Nothing sport the of record. politics and politics <laughs> of sport. He could also drop the velvet hammer on just about anything, not oh. just politics. That's typical of you. That You like everything except America. Yeah. I like American sports. <laughs> Basketball. He's become family to our newsroom. What was it like to work with Mark Shields? It must be heaven is usually the comment that I got. And it was heaven. I'm not sure in the, in the past 30 years that I've met a more gracious, kind person to work with. Even as a young green reporter, he really listened to what I had to say. He was so respectful, so interested in, in my take. And that really stood out to me. Mark always brings a great energy into the makeup room with him. And no matter what is going on with him, he always asks, how are you? And he means it. It's sincere and it's earnest and it's unselfish. He's a man of deep character and integrity. And I cherish our friendship. He is beloved by his current and former producers, even for his strict pre-show routine. There is a small audio booth down the hall from the studio and the control room. That's his office. That's where he sets up. You have to have the blue paper. You have to have the highlighters in various colors. I remember getting a call from him one day. Just a reminder, I like this on blue paper in this format, and please keep them stapled. And also for his one-liners. And he caved like a $2 suitcase. One Friday night, I was doing the political rap with Mark, and the lights went out in the studio. Whoop. We just lost some lights and power here. I just kept talking because Mark said, we're always in the dark anyway. It's a funny line, but not true. Mark Shields, at least, was never in the dark. A lot has changed in the last year, as Shields and Brooks and the world have gone virtual. Mark, how's it going? Well, Judy, I'm rereading Tolstoy for the third time, and no, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> through it all, he's been with us, guiding us through an election like no other in our lifetimes. There is no more fundamental right than the right to vote, uh, but the right to vote means nothing unless it's counted. And with that, it's time for the final Friday night analysis of Shields and Brooks. That is syndicated columnist Mark Shields and New York Times columnist David Brooks. And before I go any further, I want to make it clear. Mark will continue to be a part of the NewsHour family as an occasional contributor. We're going to have him back when there's a major political event or anything else that he wants to weigh in on. But Mark, before I let you and David speak, I want to say... What an utter joy it has been for me to work with you over the years, to be the beneficiary, along with our audience, of your wisdom, your brilliant insights, and as we heard in that video, your humor. I know our founder, Jim Lehrer, adored and appreciated you. We've all learned from you. It is impossible to put it into a few words, but the entire NewsHour family owes you a great debt of gratitude. We are going to miss having you with us every week. And now I'm going to let you speak. So, Mark, uh, what did you think about the video? <laughs> uh, Judy, it was like like uh, reading David's column, uh, his generous column. I, <laughs> I, I just uh, regretted that my uh, my parents weren't alive uh, to read it and enjoy it because uh, uh, my father would have enjoyed it and my mother would have wanted to believe it. And uh, I, I just thank everybody uh, for their uh, over-the-top, um, and uh, and two generous uh, remarks. Uh, it's been it's been 33 wonderful years. It's been a great privilege, and it's been just enormous fun. You shouldn't admit that, but that's what it's been. And David, uh, what do you think? Did you hear anything that rang true to you there? <laughs> uh, everyone knows the same Mark. Mark is Mark. Uh, when he called to tell me the news uh, a couple of weeks ago. Uh, I told him the blunt truth. Mark is the best colleague I've ever had at any level of journalism or in any line of work. Uh, I've never been around somebody who generates just so much warmth, who treats everybody with so much respect. 
Uh, I figure we haven't talked about this, Mark, but I, I figure your parents loved you really well when you were a kid and, <laughs> and you've been sharing it with the rest of us in the years since because you just <laughs> walk in a room with, with, a, with a projection of warmth and respect that people respond to. In that little column I wrote uh, about you, um, it was the number one viewed site piece on the site, uh, New York Times site today, uh, because people want this. People are hungering for, for trustworthiness and decency. And it's been a great blessing in my life to, to be alongside you for the last 19 years of this. Um, thank you, David. And Mark, we're, Mark, we're, sh we're shedding, or we're sharing all this with you because it, it's all true. But I know there's something that you want to say tonight because you've spent all these years thinking a lot about American politics and about this country. So I want to give you a chance to, to talk about it. Oh, that, that's kind of you, Judy. Uh, thank you, David. Th and I have to, I have to say, uh, D David has been the, the most uh, generous and ideal of partners uh, for, the, for the past 19 years. Judy asked once at Thanksgiving um, what I was thankful for. And one of the things I listed was that during all the time together, I'd said some dumb, stupid, um, and, and probably uh, just absolutely inappropriate things. And never once did David uh, Brooks take a cheap shot because it's it's not in him. It's not in his character, and he's been uh, uh, he's been a source of uh, uh, of great company. He's been a source of great wisdom. Uh, he's my friend, and I uh, I treasure him. So I, I thank you for those uh, those kind remarks. I I, I uh, grew up uh, when a man was in the White House who said very simply, "The measure of our progress." is not whether we add more to the abundance of those who have much, but whether we provide enough for those who have too little. Uh, it's a very straightforward, as Franklin Roosevelt. And uh, the, other, the other kind of guidepost for me in politics that I guess I learned from my, my mom and my dad, uh, my family, was that uh, uh, every one of us has been warmed by fires we did not build. And every one of us has drunk from wells we did not dig. And uh, to, together, we can't do less for those who come after us. And together, we can do so much more. Um, and it, it's, it's as straightforward as that. I, I believe politics is the peaceable resolution of conflict among legitimate competing interests. And I don't know in a nation as big and brawling, this great continent which we occupy and diverse as ours, how it resolve our differences except through the commitment, the passion, the intelligence, the courage of those who are willing to practice the political process and achieve compromise. Um, and uh, the fashion those compromises does require uh, courage and it does require hard work and intelligence. So I, uh, I, I like people who run for political office. Uh, it puts me in a very small category. Um, and uh, it, my, the example I use is if, if David and I were... Uh, I like, I like people who run for office. And if David and I were the two finalists to be the regional sales manager of the uh, uh, Acme windshield wiper company, and uh, David rightly got the promotion and I didn't, when the hometown paper announced David's success, they wouldn't add that Shields was passed over because of lingering questions about his expense account or his erratic behavior at the company Christmas party. But in politics, when you run for office, everybody you ever sat next to in study hall or double dated with, or babysat by, knows whether you won or you probably lost. And, uh, you know, I, 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 I respect and admire those who run and lose, and nobody ever did it better than an old friend of mine, uh, the late Dick Tuck, who lost a very close state Senate race in, in uh, Los Angeles. And when the lo local announcer stuck a microphone in his face to say something, he said very straightforwardly, the people have spoken, the bastards. But I mean, that's so I, you know, it's a tough, <laughs> it's a tough business. It is, but it's a, you know, it is, it is, it is wonderful. There's nothing more fun than a political campaign. Uh, I urge everybody who hasn't been involved in one uh, to, to carve it out of their schedule and try and do so. Uh, because, uh, you know, you get all these people submerging their own particular short term interest to something larger and uh, working long hours at dislocation to their, personal and professional lives. And on one 12-hour period, uh, elections have been rightly called a one-day sale. You, you find out whether you won or you lost. Um, and, uh, you know, you, 
you will forge friendships and relationships that will last a lifetime. Um, and I, so I, I, I like politics. I believe in politics. Uh, I think politics is awfully important to the well-being of our nation. And Mark, um, one of the things David wrote about you uh, in his column today is um, it, it, that, that, you, that there's this basic trust or basic decency uh, that you believe uh, exists in people uh, who serve uh, in public life. There's a, th I think right now there's a lack of faith that that's there. So I'm curious, as you, as you take this next step in your life, are you optimistic about the country, about what lies ahead? Uh, what do you see? Well, I, I think optimism is is uh, the de defining characteristic of America. I mean, uh, with the exception of those whose ancestors were here when Columbus arrived, of those whose ancestors were brought here against their will and chains, every American is either himself or herself an immigrant or the direct lineal descendants of immigrants. And to leave, you know, friends and family and familiar surroundings to strike out across the sea of the continent to a place you've never met, been, to meet, live among people you've never met, to speak a language in many cases you've never heard, is an act of enormous courage. But it's also a statement of profound optimism. And America was found and, and continues to be founded on a daily basis by, on, by optimism. I'm not a Pollyanna. I, I know that we were all born in original sin and we're capable of just dastardly things, uh, personally and collectively. But... Uh, when, when asked by our, our leaders uh, and have to, leaders who reach out to our best um, and ask us for collective sacrifice for the common good, Americans have responded rather remarkably. Um, and uh, I, uh, uh, I, I recall when uh, John Kennedy uh, was president and proposed the Peace Corps, and uh, one young man was volunteering, and they asked him why. And he said, uh, nobody ever asked me to do anything unselfish or patriotic, and President Kennedy asked me. And, uh, you know, that I, I think when Americans are asked, I think uh, I'm optimistic about Joe Biden, uh, because he's not a wall builder, he's a bridge builder. Uh, he's somebody who extends that, uh, that hand of friendship. Um, and I will we'll find out if the folks on the other side of the bridge uh, will come a third across or uh, halfway across. Uh, but I, you know, I, I'm, I'm hopeful. I, I really am. At, and we, yeah, and we've done we, great things. We've done great things, Judy. I mean, we've, at, we've saved the Great Lakes. We've taken the lead out of the air. I mean, we've done we've done wonderful things. We we built a war torn Europe. Um, you know, we as, you know, we just we have, and we ought to be aware of that. As as we um, continue this conversation, Mark, and and I bring David in, I also want to ask the love of your life, Anne Shields, who I think is nearby. The two of you celebrated your 54th wedding anniversary yesterday. Anne, she's coming in right now. She's going to take her place oh, next you. to Mark. Uh, important. <laughs> We're making room for her. Uh, David, I want you to reflect. A little more on uh, what this what this means as uh, as we say goodbye to Mark on Fridays. First, I want to say I've been I think extremely highly of Mark. He's a wonderful guy. As I've said, he nevertheless still set the world record for marrying up. Uh, so I pay tribute to Anne, <laughs> uh, who's a truly remarkable person. Um, wow. You know, I, I, I would uh, I would say that Mark is um, like all of us. We're formed by a certain era, uh, and in in Mark's case, it was. The period, I think, when he was a Hill staffer in the mid-60s. And look, at government was working. The GI Bill had worked. The, the Civil Rights Act, the Voting Rights Act, the Fair Housing Act. Government was doing a lot of stuff. People were compromising. The system was working. And so you had a sense that this was a noble activity. Politics and the power involved in it is, is a means to an end. And the end is, is comforting the unfortunate, serving the marginalized, waging a war on poverty. And so you had the sense that this is not just some game. This is a noble profession because it's about achieving noble ends for people who need a hand up. And so with that came a, a, a feeling that you were there to serve the underdogs. With that came a deep sense of equality. Uh, and, uh, you know, I was a kid who had Hubert Humphrey's poster on my wall, who Mark probably knew. Uh, and uh, so that was, that was inspiring. So it's a more morally holistic way to think of politics. And 
And I speak to young people, and all they've known is broken politics. Mm -hmm. uh, and I try to assure them it wasn't always broken, uh, right. and that there's a way to, to bring it back so it's not broken again. We go through cycles, and we'll come back and, and fix the politics that broken. But Mark just comes for that era, like his neckties, neck, I'm going to think of it. But, um, and I, uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. we hope. We hope, the, we hope the broken politics are not behind us. Uh, Mark reminds us uh, that everything good is possible in the future. And as we say goodbye uh, to Mark on you, this, to Mark and to Ann Shields on this Friday night, uh, I, I just want to express to you what you've meant, Mark, again, to us and to our audience. We have received thousands of comments, literally, since we announced earlier this week that this would be your last Friday night. But I want to stress again, you're going to continue to show up uh, on our air when important things happen. So you leave with our love um, and our affection and our eternal gratitude. Mark Shields, there with the love of his life, Ann Shields and David Brooks. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Judy. Thank Thanks, you, David. Judy. Thanks. See you, Mark. See you, David. And that is the news hour for tonight. I'm Judy Woodruff. Have a great weekend. Thank you. Please stay safe and good night. Major funding for the PBS News Hour has been provided by 